Hey, Ethan, I appreciate you doing this. I'm curious kind of just what it, it feels like for you to get the attention that you've gotten so far, just nationally and, and with the success that you're having, how that feels and how you kind of handled that and kind of digested the situation. Um, thank you for having me, by the way. Uh, I've gotten a lot of attention, like, since 14 nationally, like, playing club ball, stuff like that. So it's not really anything new, but at the same time, like, now I'm older and mature, I try to block it out a little bit more. Like, I like seeing it and stuff like that, but I don't let it get to my head. Like, when I was younger, I'd see it and be like, oh, wow, I'm getting all this stuff. Like, it's getting easy for me. I don't need to work as hard and stuff like that. But seeing it now, like, being older, more, more mature, like I said, I look at it now as still just motivation to – like get the same attention again next week or after this weekend, stuff like that. I just keep doing the same routine that I stick with. Sierra. Hi there, this is Sierra Santos from Fox 10. I wanted to know how fun has this season been for you and the team? <laughs> it's been, uh, words can't even describe how fun it's been. Uh, this team is, this team's a great team, but it's like off the field, we're just a family. Like we hang out with each other day in, day out, off the field, on the field, wherever it is. Like we're always hanging out, having fun together. So this team's something special and we like to have a lot of fun together. Zach. Hey, Ethan, uh, first of all, congratulations on, on the awards. I'm sure that's got to feel nice. Second of all, I wanted to ask about the, the nickname Easy and how that came about because right now it seems like it's in reference to how college baseball might be a little too easy. Yeah, thank you, by the way. Um, so my middle name is Zachary, so my initials are easy. So uh, my dad actually, he wanted my initials to be easy since I was born. So my name was supposed to be Ezekiel Long and not have a middle name, so he could just call me easy. And then right when I was born, my, uh, my mom and dad agreed to make it Ethan Zachary so they can still call me easy whenever. So, yeah, there's always been my initials. Uh, my family has always just called me like Biggie or Easy, something like that. And it's just stuck with me now. Raymond. Hey, Ethan, congrats. You talked about the kind of personal attention you've been getting. But what has it meant for that to kind of go into the program, getting the attention to through you and just viral clips on social media, uh, stuff like that? What does that mean for the program to get more exposure, especially heading into the postseason? I mean, it's awesome. Uh, like this day and age, kids in high school, stuff like that. And they're big on social media. They see all this stuff. So I know that my really close friend in high school, Carson Tucker, who got drafted by the Indians, um, when he committed to Texas, they made this big video on social media and it went all over, stuff like that. And just like recruiting wise, like getting more kids to want to come here. Like they see that and they're like, wow, this place is sick. This place is fun. Stuff like that. They'll always want to come here. So it means a lot to the program to have our stuff going all over. Jacob. Ethan, has it at all crossed your mind kind of how the production that you're putting together offensively this season is similar in some ways and, and kind of it replacing in a way the production that Spencer Torkelson had when he was here? Has that been a thought for you that you're doing similar things to him? Um, it's definitely been a thought. Uh, when I committed here, I have – I'm like a big uh, visual guy, so I have a goal board at my house. When I committed here, I uh, wrote on the goal board that I wanted to beat Torque's home run record freshman year. So it's always been a goal of mine to, like, I've always looked up to him as a player, but it's also, like, I want to be better than him at the same time, which is really hard because he's a great, great person, but also a great player. So it's always been, like, a role model to look up to, but at the same time, like, Torque's, I've said it before, Torque's Torque and I'm me. Like, I don't want to be Torque, but I just want to be the best version of myself, and I want to be able to have – somebody to look out to but at the same time view it as competition wise and just try to be better than them. What's up Ethan how's it going you know I was looking at your stats and it's just amazing you had your second home run of the season on April 20th and then we all know the explosion afterwards I was just wondering is there something mechanics wise that any of the coaches uh, told you or or some motivation that anyone, maybe a player, a coach, a family member gave you to just go off like that? Um, my hitting coach has always been my dad. I've never really went out and got hitting lessons, stuff like that. So he knows my swing best just because I've been hitting with him since I was three years old when I started baseball. Um, 
so after the Washington series, I was not real happy with how I was doing at the plate. I wanted to get better, so I asked him to come here, throw BP. Like, told him I just wanted to throw and try to figure stuff out on my own. And as we were working, uh, I was watching videos, stuff like that. So it felt a little better after BP, stuff like that. Went to practice the next day, was working on new things, and me and Mike earlier were talking, our hitting coach, and uh, him, he helped me realize, like, how strong I really am and that I don't need to try to produce so much power. Like, I have enough in there that I can just have a simple, easy swing, still get the same amount of power off. And the thing that really clicked for me was he said, like, one run is, it could be 388 feet, doesn't have to be 500 feet every single time. Like either way, it's still a run. So me hearing that, I was like, all right, uh, that's a good point. Like the long ball that's hit 520 feet, whatever, those look cool, but at the same time, it's still one run if you barely get it out or you hit it out by a mile. So just simplifying my swing, uh, took away my stride, try to think like, I don't need to get a big leg kick or a big stride, stuff like that. Just think, stand in my legs, get into the ball. And that's pretty much what's been helping me the most. Yeah. Ethan, if you were to go back a year or two, back to Mountain Point, and then tell yourself that you're going to win in your freshman year a Player of the Week honor unanimously, are, are you laughing in your face? Or are you saying that's ridiculous? What's your reaction to that? Um. I would, I would expect it, honestly. Uh, on my goal board, like I said, I had to beat Torque's record, but I also had player of the week, freshman of the year, Pac-12 player of the year. I have all these goals that I want to achieve. And I, it's not just me writing it down, thinking like, oh, I can do this. It's like, all right, like, I'm going to do this if I'm writing it down. Like, so I've been, just been checking off all the goals that I've achieved so far. I'll have my grandma check it off back at the house. So it's always just when I write like write down my goals, I put my mind to it and I want to achieve it, but it's not like I can, it's like I'm going to. So I've always viewed it as that. Michael. Ethan, with uh, hitting all the home runs, is it difficult at times to really kind of stay within yourself and not to try and hit home runs every at bat? Yeah, def definitely is. Uh, my goal is not to hit a home run every at bat. My goal is just put the best barrel that I can on the ball hit it hard, get the job done for the team. But when I was first started going real good, um, hitting home run after home run, stuff like that, it was like, all right, I need to hit a home run every single time. So I've got a little too big at times. But for me, when I'd get to two strikes, I'd kind of get back into reality and just realize, like, all right, well, what am I doing? Like, that's not me. Uh, just calm down, get the ball on the ball, or bat on the ball get the job done. Um, so that's like, as I've gone on doing it, uh, it's definitely toned me back a little bit that I don't need to hit a home run every time. I just need to get a base hit or hit it hard. So that's really how like, I've progressed since the beginning. Hey, then I've set a question. Where did your idea for this goal board come from? And what is your favorite part about playing the game? Um, to the first part of the goal board, uh, my dad's kind of the one who motivated me to do that, but I've been doing it since seventh grade, probably. Um, I remember I wanted to make the uh, 15 national team for Team USA. I cut, like, printed out a piece of paper of the 15 national team, cut it out, put it on my mirror. So every morning I woke up, saw that. Uh, so I've been doing the goal board stuff since I was probably 13, 14 years old. And then the second part, my favorite part of the game, God, there's many. Uh, I'd have to say just being out here with my teammates, like enjoying the time that I have with them and uh, performing the way we do. Like being here, uh, we're with each other every day, practice, workout, stuff like that. So seeing how hard our whole team works and seeing all of us succeed, it's just, I mean, it's a feeling you can't describe. It's one of the best feelings ever. Yeah. Hey, Ethan, you're one of four or five consistent freshman starters on this team. Obviously, you guys have your goals for this season laid out in front of you immediately, but do you guys ever sit back and talk about just how good you can be over the next couple of years as you guys grow up a little bit? Um, back in the fall, we would talk about it a little bit, but now that we're in season, uh, we don't really – like right now our goal is just set on this year. 
get the job done this year, get to Omaha, get a national championship, stuff like that. So we're not really looking forward so much right now. We're just trying to stay within this season. Uh, just look forward to the next game we have, get the win on that one, and then just keep going from there game by game. Ravens. With all this offensive success you've been having, has any amount of focus shifted away from getting back on the mound? And if not, is there an update you have on what your status for pitching is? Um, no, not really. It hasn't taken away the focus on the mound. Uh, I still do rehab stuff every single day, trying to get it stronger, get ready to get back on the mound whenever I can. Um, I've done both my whole life, so it's like – Never been. If I'm struggling at the plate, I need to focus more on that instead of hitting or pitching, anything like that. So I've always tried to even it out, work hard on both the same amount. Um, and then the status right now, we're just day by day uh, trying to figure out exactly when. Like, we don't really know. We're just trying to see how it feels day by day and still feeling good. And then there'll be a day where it's, like, killing me. So it's like going back and forth, but it's been going good for the past week. So hopefully soon. If I could just quickly follow up, are you optimistic that uh, there's a chance you would be on the mound in the postseason? Um, I feel like I will be. I hope, I really hope so because that would help our team, help our bullpen, uh, give us another arm that we can have. So I really hope so, but I guess we'll just see going day by day. Jacob. In kind of a general sense, what, what does it say about the team, the success that you guys have been able to have this year, given the lack of experience offensively? Because you're one of quite a few freshmen who, you know, is contributing at a very high level for this team. So what does it say about what you guys are able to do that you've done it with such young people? It just says, like, how tough we really are. Um, we had a lot of kids, especially on the pitching staff, uh, a lot of injuries, like key injuries. Coop, Boyd, Eric, um, having those guys down, it was really tough. So, I, like, offense-wise, we knew that we are probably going to have to score quite a few runs every single game. Um, beginning of the year, completely different story. Uh, we had all three of them. We thought two runs a game would help us win, anything like that. But having them go down it just shows how tough we are and how hard we work. And then having, like, Connor Davis go down, that's a big bat that we could have had. Um, him down, we knew that we'd have to step up even more at the plate. And we didn't think we were going to have the power numbers that we have. And I just thought, or I was hoping that I would help him uh, take his place, put up the power numbers that he could have put up. But I've been doing a pretty good job with that. Yeah. After your first home run on Saturday, I, I jokingly tweeted that I wasn't going to be impressed anymore until you pulled one. And about 30 minutes later, you did just that. So I'm wondering, did you read that tweet in the dugout? And then on a more practical level, what is it about your approach that makes you so prolific in your power to the opposite field? <laughs> I did not read that tweet in the dugout. Um, as soon as I get to the field, I'll, I mean, I'll hang out, eat, stuff like that, be on my phone. And then once I'm done eating and I hit the shower, I won't look at my phone again until about I get to my car after the game. So I like to... Un I call it unplugging. Uh, I'll do that. But I saw the tweet, um, saw the first one, and then saw the second one. So I thought it was actually pretty funny. And then uh, my approach, really, I mean, I'm just thinking drive the ball wherever it's pitched. I get pitched away often, so that's why I'm having quite a few home runs to opposite field. But I'm never going to try to yank one uh, just to yank one, really. Like, if he throws it inside – I'll make them pay for it. If it goes away, I'll make them pay. Like anything within the plate, anything within the zone, I'm going to try to make them pay for it. And uh, I'm just hoping to hit the ball hard every time wherever it's pitched. Gentlemen. Hey, Ethan. I'm curious to know uh, where did the, the shake and bake squad come from with you and Kate Higgins? So, And then I've, I've, I've also seen the handshake um, with you and Hunter Haas. Um, and so I just, I was just curious, what is the camaraderie, the, the vibe amongst uh, all the freshmen on the team and just how, how has that propelled you guys? Uh, shake and bake between me and Cade, that's just, we love Talladega Nights. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen, like, I wear my Ricky Bobby shirt quite a bit. 
It's probably my favorite shirt. Um, so I'm a big Talladega Knights fan. Kate is too. And uh, he's not my roommate, but we all of us are in the dorms. He's like two rooms across, but he's in my room. Like he's pretty much my bed, pretty much. Like he's always on my bed. I'll be, I'll go get food, come back, and he's already in my room playing Xbox, doing something. I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? Like we're always hanging out. We go do everything together. That's my boy. Um, so that kind of started just from Talladega Nights. Like we watched the movie and we're like, all right, that's us. Like we're both funny, goofy, just like to have fun. And then handshakes with Haas. Me and Haas have played together since probably nine years old, 10 years old with Sandlot out here. And then when we got to high school, um, he went to Corona. I was at Mountain Point or rival high schools. So those games would be pretty fun. But I mean, he is, he's my sweet mate. So we live together in the dorm. We're together every day, same way. Uh, so all the freshmen, like, we just like to hang out with each other, have fun, be in the dorms with COVID too. Like, there's not much you can really do around campus. So we'll just hang out, go do it, grab food, go golf, bowling, fishing, anything there is. Like, we'll find some way to have fun with each other every single day. Hey, Ethan. So, Clearly, you're showing no signs of fatigue. I mean, you have four awards this week to prove that. But I guess my question is, just with UCLA coming up and kind of the postseason in mind, are you doing anything to make sure or prevent that you don't show any fatigue or not wearing yourself out too much? Yeah, um, I just stick with my routine that I've set for the past probably two months now, month and a half. Um, hit twice a day. I'll do my recovery probably four times a week, uh, like late at night, just come back, throw on some recovery boots, ice bath, something like that. Just get the body still moving, uh, stretch every day, do everything I can to help my body still feel at 100% every single day. Um, late in the season, I'll definitely, like there's definitely some fatigue in everybody that just happens, but doing the best that we can to stay around about now. 90 to 100 percent healthy like it's the most we can ask for this late into the season starting the last couple questions here uh Tressa? hey ethan i know that you talked a little bit about your dad kind of being your hitting coach and stuff but i'm just curious what your relationship has been like just on the field and off the field and how much it's really helped your career really oof uh i mean when i was younger he was real hard on me but he did it because he wanted to be the best that I can be. And I mean, looking back at it now, I can't say thank you enough to him. Like everything that all my success, everything that I've done so far, it's because of him, like how hard he pushed me when I was younger. Um, the work ethic he's given me, like he's put into my head. Like he's, I, when I was younger, I would say like, I didn't want to hit stuff like that. And he's like, no, like, you'll thank me later on. Like, let's go hit. Like, all right, so then we go hit. Even if I didn't want to, I'd still go do it, stuff like that. Looking at now, it's like all I want to do is hit. Like, that's my fun, like, get away, whatever. I'll be at the dorms, laying in bed at, like, 9 p.m., watching TV. I'm like, all right, I'm bored. I'm going to the field. I'm going to go hit. Like, he's just helped install that in my head. I can't thank him enough looking back at it now. Jonah. And um, we know uh, Drew Switch, you know, he's called Mr. Sun Devil and uh, Ferry and Shima are also some elder statesmen on the roster. But um, it just, do you guys, do you feel like you're taking on somewhat of a leadership role here in just your freshman season? I mean, it seems like um, when when you guys need to run, you uh, you deliver and the team rallies behind you. So um, could you just talk about that, that leadership role maybe you're taking on? Yeah, um, I've always viewed it as like lead by example. Uh, I've always wanted to be a leader, even though like I'm not real big on the whole freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, like seniors, always the leader, stuff like that. Like even in high school, uh, I was a sophomore when I went to Mountain Point and I had to sit out half the year because I transferred from uh, Skeet High School. But even though I played nine games my sophomore year, like everybody still told me, like we had captains that were both seniors our captain told me, like, look, the team looks up to you. Like, I want you to be the captain. I was like, all right, like, I'm fine with that. So I always view it as, like, lead by example. Um, I always play, like, 
someone's watching me wanting to be like me. So I'll just try to be the best out there and always put up like good numbers, stuff like that, but also just be the best teammate. Like it's my main goal is to always pick up my teammates when they're down or say, uh, say like Friday night, Sean didn't get a hit and game was still down by one or whatever out of, like if he struck out and he was walking back, I would have told him like, look, I got you, man. And then just got the job done. Like I'm always a big teammate first kind of guy. Uh, always want to be best friends with my teammates but the other team I don't want them to want to come back to our field like those are pretty much the enemy so I'm always I'm always real close to my teammates and always just want to lead by example Zach. Hey Ethan apparently there's actually some interest in your in and out order and I caught some flack for not asking if you like your fries animal style or not so I have to know the public needs to know. Um, I, I don't get animal style. I just get regular, but I'll get, they call it a clam shell. That's where they put the animal style, like case or whatever it is. I'll get that and then get like three spread packets and then spread the spread packets in, into the clam shell and then dip my fries in there and set a ketchup. Big in and out spread fan, so. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Any other questions? All good. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Steve.